Ghost stories, love potions, and sacrificial offerings, the urban legends that La Paz comes alive with. La Paz is a city that is alive with its legends and culture, and it's the urban legends that made me truly fall in love with this city. Never have I seen another place where stories were so vibrant, so present, and such an intricate part of a city. The dusty mountain air and the busy little alleyways, the colorful markets and the paintings on the wall. There's a story to be discovered behind everything, and I'll share a few of those with you. Love Potions and Llama Fetuses at the Witch Market The title mentioned Love Potions, and yes, you can actually buy Love Potions at the famous Witch Market or Mercado de las Brujas in La Paz. And not only Love Potions, you can purchase a blessing or a curse, a potion to heal someone from a drug addiction or powder that cures impotence. And among all of these, there are the Llama Fetuses. Llama Fetuses literally everywhere. Not to worry. They're natural miscarriages and actually quite common among llamas. Llama fetuses are omnipresent at the witch market and they're used for a wide variety of purposes. Most importantly, however, you need one when building your house. For good luck, you bury one of them underneath your house as an offering to Pachamama or Mother Earth. This, however, only works for houses with less than three stories, or so that claims the urban legend. For houses taller than that, you need something more powerful. And no, I'm not talking about two fetuses. I'm also not talking about a grown llama. Brace yourselves, people. For houses taller than three stories, Pachamama claims a human. Yes, a grown-ass human. But don't worry, you won't be thrown into a hole when visiting the city. According to the legend, when such a house is built, one of the shamans will find someone who won't be missed by anyone, such as a drunk homeless person without a family. Then the shaman will get that person blackout drunk and drugged, and when they're sufficiently out of it, they'll be buried underneath the house to be. Rumor has it that sometimes years later, bodies have resurfaced under modern buildings. Of course, this is all a legend. The biggest of these witch markets is up high in El Alto, which is one of the biggest open air markets in Latin America. I also told, told you before already that one of the things that can be bought there are natural treatments for impotence. A few years back, there was a new potion that treated impotence. And as I was told the story, the men who buy this stuff are usually also the men who aren't overly lucky with the ladies. So this so meant that these are also the men who frequently use the prostitute services. Soon after this remedy had come onto the market, the prostitutes of La Paz come, came together to speak out for themselves on TV. Their customers kept dying while climaxing. They asked the police to investigate, and the investigation brought to light that the dose of the specific impotence cure was more suitable for a horse than a human. The dose was adjusted, and you can still buy this potion nowadays. Next to the market in El Alto, there's a street dedicated to Aymara shamans. They live in tiny wooden huts, one next to the other. Outside of each hut, there's a bonfire for the shamans and their customers to make offerings to the gods. Not just anybody can become a shaman. You have to either be struck by lightning and survive, apparently that awakens the powers inside of you, or inherit the power from your ancestors. We went to see one of these shamans and got our fates red from coca leaves. Don't do this unless you're with someone who really knows what's going on and who knows the culture. Our shaman inherited his powers from his great-grandfather, whose skull he also casually kept on a shelf in his hut. That, by the way, almost gave me a heart attack. I had never before seen an actual human skull, much less one casually lying around the house. Before our reading, we got to go out the back of the hut, where we were surprised with the most amazing views over the city. What you'd never expect when first entering the hut is that they are located right on the rim of the bowl that is La Paz, and you can see the city from up high from their backyards. But on to our reading. For those who know me, I'm a very down-to-earth person, very practical, and I really don't believe in those things, whether it be tarot cards or zodiac signs. However, the atmosphere of this place was definitely something special. It's hard to describe what it was like exactly, sitting there and having our fortune read from coca leaves, asking questions about my life and future, 
I was awaiting answers with a slightly queasy feeling in my stomach while thinking, all of this is so stupid, but still kind of wondering whether it's actually true. It was definitely an experience. I guess we'll know whether or not the shaman was right by the time I'm done with having kids. According to my reading, I'll have two girls. We'll see whether that's true. Coming back out and walking through the cobbled streets of La Paz, I and the others found our high spirits again, and when we went back to joking about our readings. According to our guide, some people come to see the shamans daily to have their fates read. Some go there to find out whether their spouse is cheating, others to find direction in regards to their profession, and others again seek guidance when making a big decision. A lot of these traditions date back to a combination of indigenous beliefs and Catholicism. When the Spanish conquered these areas, they aimed to provide indigenous people with something they knew in order to convert them to Catholicism more easily. This is why Pachamama, or Mother Earth, an indigenous goddess, was merged with the Virgin Mary. This manifests in a lot of traditional religious artwork. Just like that, offers to the gods, which were common to both traditions, were encouraged by the Spanish. While these stories and traditions may seem wild and crazy and weird to a Westerner like me, they're an intricate part of culture and history of La Paz. They reinforced the charm and fascination of the city, and they took my heart by storm.